In this video, we're going to discuss the energy levels of the rigid rotor model system. So from the previous two videos, we have our rigid rotor model system, two atoms of mass one and mass two. They're at a bond length, which is fixed, which we would call R or L or whatever we call it. In this video, it looks like I'm calling it R. Okay, and we have the reduced mass of this system, which is M1 times M2 divided by M1 plus M2. We have our moment of inertia, the resistance to angular acceleration, which is going to be the reduced mass times the bond length squared. All right, we saw in the previous video that our operator for angular momentum squared is going to equal negative h bar squared times this giant mess inside parentheses. Our wave function is going to be a function of theta and phi, the angular coordinates in spherical polar. You can reveal, review spherical polar coordinates in my math review video linked in the description. So negative h bar squared one over sine theta d d theta times the product sine theta d d theta plus one over sine theta second partial derivative with respect to phi. So our Hamiltonian is kinetic energy plus potential energy. Hamiltonian operator, uh, the potential is gonna be zero. So it's just kinetic energy, which we're expressing in angular terms, which is gonna be angular momentum operator squared divided by two times moment of inertia. So solving that for h psi equals e psi for our angular wave function and our angular Hamiltonian gives us the following energy levels. We have a quantum number labeled J here. Sometimes you'll see this labeled as L. Uh, I'm gonna use mostly J in this chapter. Call me out if I'm switching back and forth. So E sub J equals H bar squared, Planck's constant over two pi squared, divided by two times the moment of inertia, times quantum number J times J plus one. In this case, J is a quantum number starting at zero and going up all the way to infinity, and it's an integer, so it takes on the values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. There's another form you might often see in this equation, and it uses what we call rotational constants to simplify some of the math. So the rotational constant B for a diatomic molecule is going to be Planck's constant divided by 8 pi squared times the moment of inertia. If you work through the units of that, this is usually joule seconds. Uh, this would be kilogram meters, uh, yes, kilogram meters squared. So this ends up being a unit of hertz, one over seconds. Similarly, you might see B bar, which is the same rotational constant in units of wave numbers. The only difference here is we have divided by the speed of light. So we have H over eight pi squared C times moment of inertia. And that comes from the fact that speed of light equals wavelength times frequency of the light. So frequency equals speed of light divided by wavelength. So omega bar equals one over lambda, which equals uh, nu over C. All right, so what is our energy expression when we use these rotational constants instead of uh, the standard expression here? So we have E of J, which equals H bar squared over two times I times J times J plus one equals Planck's constant times rotational constant times J times J plus one. So that's nice, that's a little bit cleaner. And in terms of B bar, some a unit that you'll see very frequently, depending on the professor you have, E sub J equals HC B bar J times J plus one. Planck's constant, speed of light. And also note that the speed of light here is going to be in centimeters per second. So it's three times 10 to the 10th instead of three times 10 to the eighth that it would be for meters. All right, and the last fact to note is that we have a degeneracy of these energy levels. The degeneracy versus J is gonna be two J plus one. So at J equals zero, our energy is zero because we have zero times one plus times some stuff. So J equals zero, we're at our E over HCB bar is equal to zero. Our degeneracy is one. There's one energy level at, at zero energy at J equals zero. Uh, e over HCB bar, so E 
uh, for j equals 1, that would be 1 times 1 plus 1 would be 2 hcb bar. So at 2 hcb bar, we have three energy levels, 2 times j plus 1. j equals 2, we're at 6 hcb bar. There are five energy levels there. And then for j equals 3, we have seven energy levels. We're at 12 hcb bar, and the pattern continues on and on from there. So these are the energy levels of our rigid rotor system, where we have a fixed bond length, and our molecule, our diatomic molecule, can rotate in the spherical polar angular coordinates theta and phi.